by former pro setter Cameron Irwin. Difficult circumstances, Cameron, for both of these teams. But also mentally, the amount of time you have to sketch up is a battle. This might go five tonight. And we have She's so fun to watch. Really good friends, but they do utilize different systems, so it's going to be fun to see these two teams face off. It'll be rotation one for Minnesota with Schaffmaster taking the opening serve. And Tyra Ariel throws one back to Aninga, who's also a great server, will rotate back and take this first serve for the Trojans. Handled by Palabiak, the libero. Tight on the set because Livings, one of their pin hitters, had to set the ball there. And a double is called because the ball went over the net and was touched by an opposing player. You can still get a double in that situation. Alex Acevedo with the serve. To Aninga setting the middle again, it's Ariel. <laughs> well, we set it right off the top. Ali Batenhorst clips the tape. Tuninga can send that ball anywhere, but this time Minnesota was ready for living. This to USC's defensive scheme. Their off blocker comes underneath to pick up those tips. So out of the offensive scheme, as Minnesota has the ability to transition back out for the point. Lydia Grote gets one to the court for a Golden Gophers point. Lydia Grote is the priority for Minnesota. She has been a daunting task for teams to have to face. She is so uh, in her skill set, whether she's on the right side or the left side. She's shown the ability to convert from either side. Even in the same match, she moves around as Ariel is denied. Set her for the middle attack. Three straight for Minnesota, make it four. <laughs> Middle's going back and forth. Now Shaftmaster sets Grote. Lower set outside there to Famuina. Tuaninga has some options. Famuina again. Some of these long rallies we expected. Famuina through the block and down. Transition play. Brad Keller was telling us he hopes that USC can drag out these points and be the more creative team in transition. Rattles around the block. We go back to Hanson again. Livings has a big arm. Opportunities on the outside as well. We've seen a lot of lineup changes the last few matches for both of these teams. There are some injuries involved. In this case, you just have two players who have flip-flopped, as you described. That is out on the swing by Favolino. Coach Keller was upside in the opposite spots from where they're at at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, because Livings has such a really pretty platform. Her ability to have that first contact is something they want. Six rotations in there. Not a system, though, and that was a ball you just got to get over. That's where you see some. Attack uh, USC's serve receive and try and get them to pull that first pass off the net. And USC on the whole this season has been up and down as a passing unit. And the Chow Shaftmaster loses out. But Minnesota still on the point. And a slide swing for Calissa Minnitz. He misses the mark. Over 0.8 blocks per set. Very good. A roof. It is Leah Ford who ends tempo even in those opportunities. Whereas for Minnesota, they're going to send a high ball to the outside, like on that last play. Three straight for the Trojans. Back and forth in the early going. Good block cover. Tipped over by Hanson. And that is smashed. 
Just those last two steps, and she can... Sort of Division One Power Conference outside hitter does when there's no block there. The deception is what allowed that open net opportunity. You don't see a lot of points where there's just no block on a set like that. Another absolute smash from Livings behind the attack line this time. From that corner. Part of the reason why they flip flop those two pins to where they are now. Living so good at that D ball behind the right attack line. It's Minity answering, stretched out toward the pin. And the way the pin at the half is halfway between the middle of the court and the pin attack. Good pass by Batenhorst. Pass to attack. Block was ready. Tight a little bit on the set. Batenhorst looking for hands. Didn't get him. And she turned that 45 degree angle right towards the first row. So look out there. This time goes the other way, right down to the court. Well, Cornhuskers team the last few years just had that really heartfelt reunion match last weekend was really cool to see. Yeah, it was. Brad Keller said he'd never seen something like that, especially an opposing player getting a press conference put on by the host institution. Here is Peyton Horst finding the angle. And it's such a sharp angle to attack to. Throat hitting left side. Heavy arm from Grote. Keegan Cook has been notorious as a coach for training his outside attackers to be great at hitting high hands, aiming deep into the court, and it becomes so challenging to block. Grote is really good at that skill. Whoa, right into the block. Livings is denied. The other side of the net. To be able to pick up a solo and take a put Grote against some of the best pins on the opposing side. Part of the reason why they moved Grote around as well. Good play there by Allie Batenhorst. Adjustments even from a coaching standpoint in the rotations that these teams look to and the matchups that they look to. A couple of teams that this year at least have some similarities, even though their coaches have different styles, but the coaches know each other really, really well from Keegan Cook's days at Washington. Rolled right to the middle, and that's a kill for Famuina. Sitting back on their heels, that's what that changeup can do. USC very good at changing up their pace. Trojans are insistent here in transition off the block all the way across and out. It's a kill by Jaden Livings. We're seeing a lot. They have a lot of weapons to utilize, but if those two are at the next level, this offense is going to be firing on all cylinders. Kill by Grote. Both of them really pop on Phil time with a back injury, so it's almost like she's a freshman, even though she's a redshirt sophomore. Yeah, she still has three years of eligibility. Even Batenhorst had a reaction to that interaction. And a point for the try. The shift is working. Through 32 points of action here in the first set and a missed serve puts Minnesota back in front. There is Hansen, even more important right now with McKenna Wooker still day to day for Minnesota with a back injury. Minity on the slide early in the first set. I've seen that a lot. They can't convert, instead, Ford puts it away. Throughout this season. Gray Gosnell comes in to serve. On the pick right there. It's a big swing by Hansen. See it as much from Keegan Cook and Minnesota. But they certainly can do that when they're in system and Hansen is back there. Trying to find that sharp angle was Ford, but she missed. Here's Batenhorst. Here she is again. Jeff Master finds the back corner. We talked about the differences in these two setters to start with. That was beautifully done. I don't think anyone could do that better. Someone call the prices right. Uh, yeah, Bill Hader probably could. <laughs> Uh, 
Coming off the timeout taken by Brad Keller and USC, hoping to reverse their fortunes. Batenhorst into the block. Has to go right back, and great response getting back toward the attack line and reloading. Match up. Dayton Horse scores once again in a different type of way. It's a kill for Phoebe Alalea, who transferred from Georgia, also played. The slide from just inside the 10-foot line. Don't go to her a ton, but can certainly make it happen when they do. To an Inga, bait and horsed. Leaning towards that, Livings finds the line. Wow. Barely got it close enough there for Livings. That trend tonight. Big serve by Tuninga just missed. What do you make of that? And I, I wonder, we didn't even ask them if either. I know. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of bringing it up to Brad, for sure. No, but I think more importantly, these two have such mutual respect for one another and are good friends. There is Baton Horse from a different location. Watch for Grote on the right side here. Got to get a good pass, though, first. Instead of free ball. That's his Peach coming in for the first time with a swing. Now Grote on the right side. Hits him out of system. Nice short shot. Clever play by Adania Fowler. Hanson rockets it wide. When we talk to Brad. And that young fan enjoying the action. Hoping USC can get a top 25 win. In fact, a top 12 win as Lydia Grow. Tuninga. Tamawino rattles around the block and it falls out of play. Middle blocker in to serve Ariel. So no libero for USC. Palabiak sets Hansen. It is wide. And a tight set victory just where they finished last.